Our sponsor is TrendSpider, folks. If you're not using automated technical analysis, you're trading with one hand tied behind your back. Another analogy I could use is that you're missing an arrow in your quiver. For At one point in time, automated technical analysis or having the ability to have AI, artificial intelligence, identify for you where support levels were, where resistance levels were, that was just for the institutions. Now, folks, TrendSpider has made it affordable to the mainstream, the retail investor. I have it. I use it. I'm going to be demonstrating it today. So automate your grunt work, speed up your technical analysis, and improve your accuracy. How do you speed up your technical analysis while improving your accuracy at the same time? You do so by using their automated support and resistance levels and also using their alerts, which are by far the best alerts systems in the charting universe. And by doing so, using a rules-based approach of if this, then that, meaning if the stock breaks out, well, then you can buy the stock. If it breaks down, well, then if you're long, you want to stop out or uh, you want to short the stock. By doing so, you reduce costly analytical mistakes. So, folks, I don't want to take up the entire time here talking about TrendSpider. Take some time. Go over to their website, link below, and explore the product. They have a bunch of tutorials here. They have a seven-day free trial offer. I believe in it so much. I give it away free to our silver and gold level members. And if you're not interested in joining my service, that's fine. Join TrendSpider, seven-day free trial offer below, and... Let's get to it. Okay, so really quick here. Again, I am short of the cues, so I have a bias. So I want to be very, very transparent as we normally are. Now, the triple cues closed out uh, Thursday with a trade above 315, very slightly above 315. And so I decided book half profits on a short trade. On Friday, we broke back down below that 315 mark, which is critical, critical support. In fact, the damage that was done to the triple Qs was so egregious that we broke down below not one support level here at this anchored VWAP at $313.27. We broke down below this lower band of the rising uptrend channel in green. Folks, this is a signal that in all probability this coming trading week we are going to break down to new lower lows now what might happen here is a rally back up in an effort to try to recapture this lower band of support actually it's resistance now in green and that'll probably correlate with where this anchored vwap is so i'm going to be looking to Add more to our short position. And for those folks not familiar with what a short position is, it's a negative position. It's a bet that the stock or the ETF is going to go down. So we're going to be looking to add to our short position at 312 to 315. Members, I'll be entering our entry points, exit points, and price targets on everything we talk about today in the members area. So go check it out. Also, members, I have posted in the members area the week ahead comm commentary, that is our strategy going into the new trading week. Go check it out. Okay, so let's get to it. We know that the Qs, which is by and large a pretty much a, a tracking vehicle for the S&P 500, we're shorting it rather than the S&P 500 because it's got such a huge correlation to technology. 10-year yields above 3%. That's not good for technology. Therefore, we're shorting the Qs versus the S&P 500. Let's talk about stocks that we're looking at for the new trading week, oddly enough. My first one up is NVIDIA. Now, NVIDIA, I don't know whether to short it. I don't know whether to buy it. So we're adopting a rules-based approach. Again, if this, then that. We'll set up some alerts here, and we'll make a decision of as to what we want to do. So NVIDIA, I can give you a bull case. I can give you a bear case. So first up, so first up NVDA. So beginning with the weekly chart here, the case is clearly a bearish one. We had a bearish key reversal. Again, one of my top five favorite candlestick patterns. Link below, free, five-part video tutorial. A bearish key reversal. However, we were stopped at an anchored VWAP connecting these two prior lows. So, might we hold this? Sure, maybe, maybe. I'm not going to bet that we are going to definitely break down here because I don't know. What if 
NVIDIA does one of these numbers. The market finds a foothold, and all of a sudden, we have a higher low on NVIDIA, and it begins to move up higher. Well, then I'm going to look like a fool, unless, of course, I stop out quickly, but I don't see the shot here. I don't see the play here just yet to go short, nor long, for that matter. So all we're doing at this point in time is drawing our trend lines, taking our crayons out, drawing our trend lines, and creating alert. Again, if this, then that. If we break down below our lower band of support, okay, we could short. If we close back above it, well, we better stop out pretty quickly. So weekly chart, we want to know if we break down, also if we recapture. So we're going to use a very short-term time frame. We're not day traders here. We don't want to keep it too short. So we are good here to go. Now I'm going to have this set for triggered twice. And I'll keep it active for about a month. Now, why do I want to have it set for triggered twice? Well, I want the alert to do the work for me. So it's going to tell me on the first go around, alert number one, that we broke support if, in fact, it fires off. But what if we short NVIDIA and then it happens to manage to close out the week back above this weekly support level? Well, then we better stop out pretty quickly because our initial thesis was inaccurate the stock showed relative strength, and it may just proceed up higher. So set it, forget it. And you can see it's a, it's set here. Now what I want to do is, I'll, this is proprietary to TrendSpider. I want to show you a raindrop chart. And for those not familiar with what a raindrop chart is, it's this. It is a mixture of candlestick and uh, analysis as well as volume weighted moving average so the left side of your do uh, doji the left side of your i'm going to come to a doji star in a moment that's why i just said that the left side of your raindrop is the am the morning session and the afternoon is your right side of the raindrop candlestick and when you get a purple candlestick usually that means that you could quite possibly get a trend reversal. Is it 100%? No. Like back here, it was just a continuation. It was a pause and then a continuation breakdown just like back here. Back here was certainly an indication that there was going to be a trend reversal and we rallied for a couple of weeks. So when I look at this, I'm saying to myself, self, uh, be careful here. Don't get too... Uh, excited, wait for the breakdown below the lower band of support, and then we can look to get short of NVIDIA. If we hold it, well, then we may be looking to buy NVIDIA. Back to the standard candlestick charts. Now a daily view. Now here's why I'm bearish overall on NVIDIA and why I think it's breaking down to new lower lows. Take note of the fact that we had very, very close to an outside reversal bar also known as a bearish engulfing on Friday. We came close, but not quite. But you know what? It's good enough for government work. And what did we do? We sliced through support here in purple like a hot knife through butter. What did this represent? Well, it represented resistance back here, support here, and support through here. That is now in the rear view mirror. So if we rally back to about 170 on NVIDIA, I'm going to be looking to short NVIDIA. If we close above 170, I'll pause I'll, because we'll be waiting until late in the day to see whether or not it gets rejected at that resistance level or are we able to close above it. If it closes back above it, well, meaning this support level here at around 170, we're not going to short it. We're not going to buy it. We'll watch it. But uh, that's NVIDIA. And in fact, here on NVIDIA, the daily chart, you have an inverted head and shoulders setup. Left shoulder here right uh, head head here and a right shoulder this appears to be breaking down though i'm not putting a lot of hope that this will be a a successful inverted head and shoulders setup the reason is this is that if you take a look at the semiconductor holders this is the parent etf of nvidia or the semiconductor sector and what it's telling you is is that it's weak and probably going to get weaker and when you take a look at it on a weekly chart a bearish key reversal. Again, one of those top five favorite candlestick patterns. Use the link below. Get it free. And you can see how we broke down last week from this a ascending wedge formation, also known as a
bear flag setup and we have now broken down in all probability we're going to break down to new lower lows on nvidia and the semiconductor holders as well as the Qs. so obviously my my tone here is clearly bearish on the market now what do we like to the short side in addition to the Qs, nvidia i like zoom i think zoom is going to break down as well and again members i will put the price targets entry points exit points into the members area go check it out now zoom uh, broke down below many many weeks of consolidation this is a very bearish setup there's a phrase that i like to use and i did not make it up uh, it was taught to me by a, a very very good technician and it goes like this the longer the consolidation the greater the validation of any breakout or breakdown what does that mean well we spent literally months since March, consolidating, hitting lows in May, and then rallying back and forming a nice base. Now, Zoom had reported earnings. I don't know whether they had positive earnings, negative earnings. I'm going to assume negative earnings. And sure enough, last week, we broke down below support. So what do we do in a case like this? We first want to check with the monthly chart to identify whether or not we have support below or resistance above and then we'll take out our crayon and we'll draw it manually if nothing appears let's bring it up see what we got so on this weekly chart with trend spider i'm able to overlay monthly support and or resistance and you can see what happened here is it brought up this this dashed line when you see a dashed line on a weekly chart it means that you have a monthly support or resistance level below. Now, what we did on Friday is that we closed below monthly resistance. There's one problem because that sounds very, very uh, scary, and it is. We we have a few trading days left to go in the in the month, right? So the the month is not over yet. So we could easily rally back. We don't know whether or not this is going to close down below monthly support, but it doesn't look good. So if we break down to new weekly lower lows, we know in all probability it's not going to close back above monthly resistance. Also, what you have down below here on Zoom is or are the monthly support levels or weekly support levels in this case, last seen back in May. And that's at around $81.26. Where do we close? $81.41. we are right there. We're right on the precipice of breaking down below critical critical support on zoom therefore if we if we close down below it on a daily time frame or appear poised to close down below it on a daily time frame we're looking to open up a short position how do we do that well we could either short the shares sell naked calls or buy a put debit spread what is that well you'd buy a deep in the money put and then you simultaneously sell a deep out of the money put helping you finance the trade so that if you're wrong well you're not wrong by 100 percent of your investment and you could offset some of the time decay because you sold the deep out of the money put to help finance the trade so i'm a big fan of doing those when i'm short in fact that's what we're doing when we're shorting the cues right now so those are the strategies i would employ uh looking to short zoom in all probability a bear put spread or a put debit spread whatever you want to call it call it cupcakes it doesn't matter it's a short position or just short the shares out right now if we close down below 8126 what then becomes your stop loss point well don't put it too far above 8126 because we have happen to close out the week or the month back above it well you may want to stop out of that trade so members more to come on this trade we do send out alerts on all of our trades whether they be options or equities and that's on the buy or on the sell of the position. Moving on, the next trade we are watching is 3M. We have an industrial. Now, 3M, this is a weekly chart of 3M. Another case where you have a counter trend rally and a bear flag setup. What do I mean? Let's, let's take our crayon out and draw it. And you can see I have monthly support already below i didn't take it off from the prior chart and you could see that on this weekly chart we have support immediately below on 3m so that's great information to have right we we want to know where this historical support below 
So what happened here with 3M is that we bottomed out in June. Then we began to rally, like with everything else. Now, the problem is, is that while we had a nice run, we were unable to hold these volume-weighted moving averages and the moving averages. We broke back down below this rising lower band of support. Then we broke down last week along with the rest of the market. So what are the probabilities here of 3M moving lower? Very, very good. The only bump in the road is going to be that monthly support level immediately below. So what do I want to do? I want to make sure before I short 3M, I want to make sure that monthly resistance level is in the rear view mirror. I'm not going to wait until next month to put the trade on to validate that, but I am going to use a alert to let me know, okay, A, we've broken down below monthly support. B, we've also recaptured it. So that way, if I have to stop out, I stop out. So let's do it now. Okay, so here we have it. We want to get alerted if and when we short, excuse me, close down below the lower band of support in blue. That'll trigger once, but we want to trigger it twice because this is breakthrough or break above this resistance level. As you can see here, trigger when price opens or and closes or closes and opens on a different sides of the buffer area. So the breakthrough is not an appropriate name for this alert, but it is what it is. So our alert is set here. We're good to go. Trigger twice, 24 days, good enough for government work. We're good to go. We're ready for the new trading week. We'll be alerted when 3M breaks down below the lower band of support. And God forbid it recaptures it after we short it. Well, then we'll be notified, hey, listen, you may want to stop out of that trade, buddy. So that's 3M. What else are we looking at into the new trading week? I'm looking at mRNA. mRNA is Moderna. Now, I think that this company is about as corrupt as they come. I think along with Pfizer as well, my own personal opinion, I have no evidence to the contrary. So... I think that what we're setting up for here is a major, major break as a new administration is, at least in Congress anyway, is rapidly approaching. You're going to have congressional hearings, and this company is going to be put under the microscope. And you can already see how shorts have already moved into this, and institutions have left the stock having peaked out back in August of last year. So it's been a full year. And it's been nothing but a bear market ever since. But it looks like it's about to get worse. Why do I say that? Well, here's your left shoulder. Here's your right, or your head. I keep doing that today. Here's your head. Here's your right shoulder. And right here in blue, actually two support levels. One is the uh, monthly volume weighted moving average overlaid on top of a weekly chart. Also in blue here is a weekly support level. How do I know that? Because the algorithm is telling me resistance up here in red, support down here in blue. Now, what I want to do here, I want to know when mRNA, I didn't mean to do that. I want to know when we close down below this lower band of support. No sensitivity. I don't want to know if it's in the neighborhood of breaking down. I want to know that it's closed down below support and we'll keep this active for a couple of weeks our alert is set here and now what we're going to do is we set it and forget it if if the stock or etf that you're looking to short doesn't come to you then ignore it avoid it uh you, you, you need to use that rules-based approach in order to be a successful trader you know the biggest problem for traders is consistency also, position sizing. Now, TrendSpider can't help you with position sizing. I can help you with, with learning how to do that. But when it comes down to trade entry and trade exit, meaning keeping your losses small and letting your gains run, that's something that could TrendSpider could help you to do. Because, again, using a rules-based approach based upon their alert system, identifying where historical support and resistance levels are like that, and using multi-time frame analysis. What is that? It's basically what we just did. On a weekly chart, we were using monthly support levels on a weekly chart. What other software is going to give you that? So, folks, so take advantage. They have a seven-day free trial offer. I give it away free. I give away a 14-day free trial offer to the contrarian trader. And 
Trade with us, learn how to trade options for cash flow, learn how to swing trade, learn how to survive these volatile markets. I have been through three bubbles already, countless corrections, so I know which one I speak, so join us. Join us, become a member, and also join us tomorrow night. If you're not familiar with me, get to know me. I go live Thursday nights, Sunday nights, and tomorrow night, Sunday Night Futures Live. We're going to be talking about where I think this market is going. I think you have a good idea already, but we're going to be using facts. We're going to be going over the news. We're going to be going over the futures action because the futures open on Sunday night. So that will give us an idea of how we're going to open up on Monday. Join us 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, Twitter, and everyone else. Please have a great weekend. Thank you for being here. Like, subscribe. Have an awesome weekend and have a profitable trading week. Thanks for being here. Be well.